So I'm chilling here on my balcony in the Penang, Malaysia, and I want to talk to you about being vegan and why it's so important. There's three aspects I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about: health, ethics, and ecology. Let's start about start with health. So, the human being is a vegan animal. We're vegans. We are frugivores. Our natural diet is fruits tender vegetables, nuts and seeds, you know, there's a lot of small nuances and stuff in our diet, but in general we're talking about fruit and vegetables. Look at our physiology, look at our anatomy, it matches that of a frugivore, not a herbivore. We're not meant to just live on greens and grass, that wouldn't work. We need more calories per bite, essentially. Fruit supplies us with the most perfect balance of nutrients to match our, our needs. So we're looking at uh, other species that kind of look similar to us, like the orangutan, bonobo, and chimpanzee, and gorilla. They are essentially frugivores. They eat a lot of fruits and a lot of leaves. Sure, they may, might eat a little bit of meat throughout the year. You know, they are a different species. They're not human. And also, who knows why they are eating that meat? Maybe it's a survival situation. Maybe it's based on territory, trying to you know prove your territory. There can be many reasons why these primates eat meat, but it's very little. It's very little. It's nothing compared to the amount of meat that human beings are eating at every meal, every single day. So much meat. No, this is not a natural diet for human beings. And milk, drinking the milk of another animal. There's no animal in nature that drinks milk beyond infancy. They reach a certain age and then they wean. They get off the milk. Human beings somehow think that they need to continue to consume milk into their adult life. It's very strange. And not, o not only that, but they drink the milk of a cow. Very, very strange. Not natural at all. Again, it can be a survival food. Sure, there's nutrients in milk. There's also anti-nutrients in milk, which are not good. But in a survival situation, maybe you could live on milk, like some people do. Um, same with meat, you know, trying to survive in the northern European forests. You're not going to find much papaya, that's for sure. So maybe you're going to eat some meat, all right. But we're not talking about survival. We're talking about thriving the ideal diet for human beings and the ideal diet is definitely a fruit-based diet a plant-based diet a vegan diet so going vegan will be good for your health because you're gonna be one step closer to your natural diet sure you can eat crap as a vegan too you can be a junk food vegan but and that's not gonna be healthy but um, it's nevertheless gonna be one step closer once you cut out the meat the eggs and the milk and all that animal food that thick very very high in fat often um, cholesterol these things are not good for us so ve being vegan is definitely an important step for your health and uh, just to quickly tackle the protein question as well where do you get your protein on a vegan diet there can't be enough protein firstly where is all the vegan animals like the cow and the ox and the horse and the gorilla and where do they get their protein? They get them from plants. So there's obviously enough protein from plants as long as you eat enough food. Uh, secondly, uh, studies have shown or research has shown that human beings in general are eating too much protein. So there's all this focus on enough protein where in reality there's not a single medical case in recorded history about that's called like that's a protein deficiency there's no word for a protein deficiency in uh, medical literature because it doesn't exist the only way you could get too little protein is if you're eating too little food it's basically starving so as long as you're eating enough calories in total you will also be getting enough protein Unless, of course, you're living on refined 
just oil and refined sugar or something like that where there's no protein obviously whole foods all have enough protein uh, so a vegan diet uh, eaten a healthy vegan diet which would be a fruit-based diet in my opinion uh, is fairly low in protein compared to most diets but that's actually a good thing we don't we don't want to have too much protein because too much protein makes for an acid body when the protein breaks down there's um, nitrogen and sulfur compounds that make the body very acidic and tax the kidneys and can lead to things like osteoporosis and kidney stones and all that so uh, a low protein diet a vegan low protein diet is a good thing I'm going to keep the protein fairly low. Uh, the protein in breast milk, I think, is about 6% of calories coming from protein. And that's a baby that needs to grow to double in size within a very short amount of time. So they need a lot of protein. Um, so for us adults, 6% of our calories coming from protein should be plenty enough. And that's about what's in mostly all the fruits. And if you're bringing in some vegetables as well, well, then you're going up in in the teens like 10 11 12 13 even 14 percent of calories from protein in some of the vegetables so plenty of protein on a vegan diet okay second ethics now this one is a quite a little bit difficult because who can say what's right or wrong right ethics like it's it's a it's a sensitive subject but i'm going to voice my opinion anyway my opinion is that it's completely and utterly unacceptable to contribute in any way or form to the animal industry, to the animal food industry. I'm talking about the meat industry, the egg industry, the milk industry, the cheese, all, all that. And that includes humane animal husbandry or organic biodynamic, all that. It's, it's sure, it's a little bit better, you know, than, than like a, a chicken that's free free range outside sure it's gonna have a better life than a chicken that's in a battery cage no doubt and if we have to go that direction go through that to come to the point where we eliminate this kind of behavior well so be it but all forms of animal exploitation is not acceptable we we cannot just go and take another being another animal and restrict its freedom and say you are now an object a product that I'm gonna exploit and I'm gonna use and you are here solely for, for, for me no it's not acceptable animals are free individuals they are here just like us to express their individuality to experience joy pleasure and pain but not inflicted by us in such a way so I'm not going to go into the details of how gruesome the food industry is around animal products, but I urge you to watch a documentary called Earthlings or something similar just to face the reality because the reality is very bad, very, very, very bad. Um, and even in the hum humane treatment of animals, It's just unacceptable to have another animal and limit its freedom to say you're gonna be here and this is your life and put them through all that suffering uh, and just for our own sake and then at the end put them through that horrendous process of slaughter concentration camps it is exactly the same as the Nazi concentration camps putting a lot of individual in one place and killing them one by one it's very bad However, for the people who go out and do their own killing, for the people who go out and hunt uh, individuals or groups, uh, it might be just uh, a few individuals here and there, or it might be whole cultures or tribes of still hunter-gatherer people that live by killing animals and eating them. Now that's a different situation, completely different. I even though I don't particularly support the idea of killing other beings and I do not see the need for it either I will still respect the people who go out and do their own killing because 
you're out there, the animal is living in, his wa in the wild, so it's a free animal. You go out and skillfully hunt down the animal. You have respect for the animal. You kill the animal. You are grateful to the animal, and then you eat the animal as part of your food. And that's a whole different situation, because that's a one-to-one -one kind of relationship between the person who eats the food and the animal itself. So even though I don't accept it as okay, I will still respect that. And I'm not going to say that's unethical. Okay? I'm, that's not my place. But I am going to say it's very unethical to buy your meat or your milk. Because doing that means you're paying money to an industry and supporting an industry that basically supports torture, animal exploitation. It's 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 the to take the milk from the mother cow you have to separate it from its calf so it gives birth to its calf and just like any mother it wants to protect its calf but no they take the calf away and the mother goes through a tremendous amount of grief and this is so that they can take her milk because the milk is supposed to go to the calf right so they have to remove the calf so that they can take the milk so that you can drink your milk so you can have your calcium completely stupid just eat oranges or papayas or mangoes or bananas plenty of calcium you don't need that milk of a cow you know where it just doesn't make any sense that we need to consume the milk of another animal supposed to go to the infant and we're adults doesn't make sense anyway so it's unacceptable to contribute to that industry and it needs to end today no more concentration camps, no more exploitation, limiting of freedom, torture, killing. It's, oh. Well, I'm not going to continue on that. Um, please educate yourself on what happens in the food industry. This is not some radical idea of some crazy hippie. No, no, this is, this is real. Look into it. Please educate yourself. And at least be honest with yourself and know what you're contributing to if you choose to buy in the store. Don't just buy it blindly and pretend, oh, nothing's wrong. No, please be aware. Just be aware. Number three, ecology. Okay, basically, if you have an area of land and you want to grow meat, right? You need to grow the food for that animal and hold and have the animal there obviously so the amount of land that's needed to grow meat or milk is essentially way more land than it's needed if you just use that same land you, you would feed much more people if you use the same land just to grow grains or vegetables roots and starches and such potatoes if you use that land to grow that directly for humans if humans were on a vegan diet and they would eat directly off the land you could feed something like 40 times the amount of people from the same amount of land as you would on a meat based diet so you need much more land to be able to grow meat and I don't know if you knew but you know all over the world you see all this grain everyone's growing grain right wheat rice corn barley millet lots of types of grains everywhere grain 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 fields and fields of grains this is not to grow this is not really most of this is not fe fed directly to human beings most of this is used to grow to feed to animals and then we eat the animals and or drink their milk or take their eggs or whatever so the amount of energy that goes into producing food for these animals is a lot and the only reason we can sustain it really is because of fossil fuels oil etc so if we want to live a sustainable life we need to live more directly off the land and why would we filter our nutrients through an animal in the first place why can't we just eat the food that's there right so if I think that we can eat yeah so 40 times as many people will be fed on the same amount of land on a vegan diet growing grains etc rather than feeding those grains to the cow and then eating the cow 
And now, if we were to grow fruit instead of grains, we would feed another two and a half times as many people as on a, just a grain-based diet. So fruit is really the most productive crop, the most abundant, because it grows in three dimensions, obviously. It requires very little maintenance. If you set it up right, trees are able to sustain themselves and they can withstand a lot of problems. So they're not as sensitive as these little little plants that, you know, the little vegetables or the little grains, and, you know, they need a lot more care. And fruit trees are so abundant. I mean, if you ever saw a mango tree, a huge mango tree, or even an apple tree back in the temperate uh, zones, you would know how abundant fruit is. It just comes dripping off the tree. It's just no limit to how much food you can get off that tree. And I've heard something like one acre of land planted intelligently would be able to support one person uh, living on a fruit-based diet. So essentially we're talking about calories in versus calories out. How much m calories, how much energy is spent maintaining the land, how much energy is going into producing the food as opposed to how much energy in terms of calories you get out of the food to nourish our body. And the one that comes out the best is fruit. So fruit is a sustainable food. It's something that the planet can handle. It's something that we can handle. With, even without the help of fossil fuels, we can maintain our food production if it's fruit-based. There's other things like, for example, on a fruit-based diet, you have very little waste. There's just the fruit scraps and and then... Um, you build a huge compost, of course, of all the, all the refuse, and you get better soil by all, using the compost. So there's lots of resources that can come out of it like that, as opposed to, I guess, a processed food diet, where you buy processed foods, everything is packaged in cans and boxes and bags and plastic, and there's all this waste that needs to be recycled and requires a lot of energy. So, if, but that's true even if you're eating a meat-based diet. If you are living on the countryside, in the countryside, it's not much waste there. But I guess the main point in terms of sustainability and ecology is that a fruit-based diet just it's much more sustainable and uh, for the planet. We don't have to use so much energy and so much fossil fuels to produce our food, which is good. And trees, I mean trees are like the solution to pollution. <laughs> we need to plant more trees. They produce oxygen, they take in carbon uh, from the air, they fix the carbon in their structure. So they're really, I mean everyone knows this, right? Walking in the forest or walking near trees, you can breathe the fresh oxygen and then as soon as you get away into the city and there's no more trees around, it's just like, but that's the pollution as well. But even when you're outside the city, when there's no trees around, you can notice the difference. So trees are amazing. So health, ethics, and ecology. Why vegan? So let's sum it up. It's good for your health because you are vegan. You are a frugivore. And eating vegan more closely matches your physiological needs. Ethics, it's unacceptable to contribute to this horrendous animal food industry that's going on. You don't want to contribute to that in any way uh, if you want to kill your own meat as a hunter I can respect it even though I don't accept it that's another story it's mainly the, the, the industry that we don't want to have and we don't want to we don't want to domesticate animals we don't want to keep them caged or limit their freedom in any way every individual needs to express their freedom it's important and the third, ecology. Fruit is the most sustainable, sustainable option for food production. It produces the most, ama most amount of food per energy invested. Uh, and it, uh, of course, ecologically speaking, it just fits. It, it is what we are supposed to eat. So uh, it makes us fit into the ecology, the, gr the greater ecology, more, uh, more perfectly. It, we, we fit our little niche uh, of uh, frugivore as opposed to trying to go outside of our ecological niche and do all kinds of weird things. 
So, if you're inspired, uh, I would love to hear your comments, criticisms, ideas, and let's have a discussion about it. If you are, dis if you disagree, um, vegan is awesome, and it's not restrictive at all. In fact, it's the most varied diet I've ever experienced and I, I mean eating fruit there's so much variation so much taste textures colors and I'm so satisfied and in terms of nutrition it just fits the bill way better than any other food looking at the nutrition of fruit and um, yeah let's go vegan it's going that direction anyway nothing can stop it but uh, yeah have fun, have a good day, please subscribe for more videos and I will see you in the next video. Go vegan!